Now, let's actually talk about what you doing. Yes. So we've discussed you, your journey. Interesting. We've discussed you, entrepreneur. Interesting. Now let's discuss what are you actually doing? Yes. Well, so I am Mohamed Ismail Bulbulia, and I'm the founder and editor of My CA Hub, right? And at My CA Hub, My CA Hub was started with a dual purpose. We create software solutions for CASAs, and we aim to make accounting awesome for everyone else. So the targeted revenue generating business part of, well, the revenue generating part of the business is the software solutions for CASAs. And we create tailor-made software for CAs to assist them with many things, in a nutshell, to save them time. Mm -hmm. One of the things I realized in my journey, right, throughout articles is, just how busy the average CA is. It's not just the nine to five. People take work home, whether you're whether you're the first year trainee or the partner, right? And um, your mind is buzzing, and you just don't have time, right? Let alone for admin issue, oh, which, is, even. which is <laughs> exactly, which is exactly which is the exact <laughs> which is the exact response. Um, most of the CAs that we've conversed with have had when it comes to CPT. People are like, oh, like it's it's a it's a it's a genuine oh, like you know like there's a there's a physical response, an emotional response, um, and we can understand that, you know. Um, so just before we get into that, let's just clarify yes. CPD is continuing professional development, which yes. is something that all professionals, whatever you do, whether you're a lawyer, like you say, your dad was an optometrist, lawyer, accountant, whatever, as a profession, part of the profession's responsibility is to make sure that when you join the profession, you are qualified. So you have all the academic requirements and internship, blah, 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 fish base. But then you need to maintain levels of knowledge, experience, exposure to stuff so that you you remain educated because obviously as things change and whatever the case is so continuing professional development is the way that all professions medical accountants lawyers doctor whatever all professions have a requirement so that you continue to study and continue to learn after you're qualified so continuing professional development takes many different forms many different ways and in most cases professions will have a specific requirement that says you must have X amount of hours per year that you spent learning stuff relating to what you do. And some of it you've got to be able to prove. You don't need to be writing tests, thank heavens for that. Okay. So you're not like writing tests or anything, but there are requirements around CPD. So obviously what you're talking about, the frustration for us as professionals is that we have to document and keep like a little portfolio of today I attended a webinar and I learned about the changes in tax. Today I read an article on MoneyWeb about, you know, in, in like, <laughs> like to prove, you know, so yeah, it's a, it's a major pain. It is a major, ma completely understandable. We get the value. We totally understand why exactly. it's needed, but the end of the year comes and as a qualified CA, you're like, oh, I haven't done my CPD. <laughs> like, that, that, I that haven't recorded my CPD. But that, is what, that is what, for those of you who aren't quite sure what mm. you're talking about, that is what CPD is and that is why it is a complete pain. And this is the problem that you set out to solve. No, no. Uh, and um, I think you've summarized it beautifully over there, which is the fact that you can definitely see the value add of continuing mm. professional development because someone could have qualified 20 years ago. And as we said, things are changing on a very fast basis, you know, at an accelerated yeah. rate. So the stuff about cryptocurrency, like you need to know what's up so you can adequately apply your skills and what you've learned effectively in yep. your job. So Society 100%. Expects it. Yeah. Society it, expects you have to do like, it. Ex yeah. Absolutely. People don't Absolutely. ask you, oh, you're a CA. Like before I employ you, when did you qualify? Like, Oh, you qualified mm -hmm. 20 years ago. Okay, no, 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 never mind, you know, um, because they expect that as a professional, you remain knowledgeable about what you need to, to, to have. So that's why like CPD is, exactly. yeah, that's why CPD is so important. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and I think you also touched on then the 100% correctly what the, the frustration is. It's the documentation and the admin. And you can, again, understand why, I suppose, that would be important to an organizational body who is overseeing that 
um, because how then do you know that they did it? You know, how, like like what's what's the evidence? Especially one that is trying to um, promote a good image and uphold the reputation, and you know, to yeah. to sort that out. So you can see why. And and that's that's for example that's what the big change I think has been well not has been I think I think the change has been from the previous SICA CPD policy that applied to CAs and the new CPD policy that now applies as of first Jan 2020. In most professions, it is um, the way that it's set up is a set number of hours yes. that you would then document yes. I did this, yes. and SICA has taken the choice and approach mm. to eliminate that completely. Yeah, you know, and. Um, They've taken the choice to, it's got nothing to do with ours and it's based purely on an output based approach, right? Yes. And you can see, I think as, as with everything I say, there's pros and cons and you can see the value in that because simply ticking off hours doesn't then really indicate mm. that you mm. are effective or compliant. It makes it very easy to just do a checklist, you know? Mm. The requirements under the new CPD policy as an output based approach, it requires every CA to perform several steps in order to say that this is the evidence of my CPD yeah. I've completed for the year. Yeah. And the way they've done that is they've said, there's three major steps. The first is you have to perform a self-assessment to identify learning areas that are relevant to your role yeah. and your current career position. Yeah. I think that's a really good point personally because they're making it very specific. Yes. You know, yeah, yeah. you could be, um, we know that CA is fulfilled a variety of roles and many people who have their own practice yeah. who have stayed within you know generally audit or tax maybe investment management um they, they fulfill a variety of roles it's not just one thing and entrepreneurship too they've also yeah. got entrepreneurship going there too because yeah. they're running their own practice so um i think that's a really good one that cas have to identify and self-assess learning areas mm -hmm. in relation to the current yeah. role. Yeah. yes that you yeah because like for, for me as you know for what i'm doing um Psycho doesn't say to me, you have to get tax updates. Yeah. You know, like I, I'm not going to go sit in tax updates. So they're, they're trying to say, start off. Like they give you categories and they say like, you know, kind of choose the categories. So there's predefined categories and then they go pick the ones that are more relevant to what you need to do and your job. And if tax is not in there, that's fine. You know, and if, you know, if risk, if, if, if risk isn't in there, that's fine too. Cause it doesn't mean that, you know, you have to be an accountant. Um, the main, the compulsory ones are things based around ethics, you know, like ethics and personal 100%. values. And that's, that's cool. That's understandable. But the rest of it is interchangeable. If you're an academic or an entrepreneur or you're in corporate or you're in practice or you're in tax or you're in efforts or whatever the case is. So, yeah. Because the requirement, so the requirement, the first requirement is just identify learning areas in relation to your current role. And yeah. I think the first step for that, right, um, is, well, where do I start? So in order to assist with structure and a framework, yeah. SICA has come up with yeah. a post-qualification competency framework. And that is a list of about 70 competencies, mm. as you said, structured, um, broken down between categories and mm. subcategories. You have the first bunch, professional values and attitudes. That's further subdivided into ethics. Um, ethics, I think it's ethics, uh, citizenship mm. and adaptive mindset. And that's further broken down to into actual competencies, mm. which is personal ethics, business ethics, professional ethics. Uh, that's one category. The second category is enabling and future competencies. Those include things such as business acumen, relational acumen, and those would have competence like communication skills, leadership skills, managing others. And then the final bunch of competencies is technical competencies. And those are the ones that would be more specific around tax planning, right. audits of historical financial statements. Yeah. And exactly like you said, right? So Saika has come up with like these 70 competencies in the post-qualification. And again, okay, not all of those would apply to you. So what Saika has then done is, you don't have to do all 70. You don't have to do what they've then said is out of the 70, they further come up with 10 career paths, right? They've taken the CA profession and divided that into 10 career paths, which they think uh, would indicate, you know, um, what a CA may follow. One is audit and assurance. Another is consulting. Another is tax and financial yeah. management. Entrepreneurship is another. Mm. And then within each of those 10 career paths, there's three proficiency levels. Entry level, mid management, uh, and senior yeah, yeah. management. Yeah. Based on the one, based on your selection of your career path and proficiency level within that, 
that will then tell you, Saika has then come up out of the 70 competencies, mm. which 30 to 40 they Most think are applicable you. exactly yeah. for you at that yeah. level, in this yeah. career path at that right. level. Someone so as a middle a, manager at an audit firm, you need to have that and that and that and that and that, and that might be at a two or a three, but if you were a partner at the audit firm, then you might have that and that and that, but that's not at a four and not a two. So yeah, it's about your career path as well as the level that you're expected to operate within. As you said, next to each of these competencies, Saika has then come up with a scoring system right. from one to four, right? right? A level, like you said, level one to four. And the idea is there are associated questions on a table. And this right. is all present on um, Saika CPD website. <clears throat> but There's, when we say present, I would like to clarify that it's, it's in like PDF documents. So it's present. Yes. So they... The, and the reason that you've done this and created this is because Psychus put it out and said, this is what you need to do. He has the process and we'll give you some templates in like PDF and we'll give you guidelines. Yes, and yes, yes. But it's a very manual process. So you're dealing with a lot of printouts and then you're like looking back and forth and you're like, okay, step one, go look there, step two. So it's a very manual very, very the manual process, process of like the process is not user friendly. Yes. No, 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 it's not. And, and again, like completely understandably, that's not that's not what they do. They're just going like, yeah. No, yes, no, no, no. Absolutely, do. absolutely. So, and for each learning area you then identified, Psyca requires you for the new policy to go find and record to go find find activities that address that learning area mm. and then record those activities. So, so what you're saying is like if we go into one of them, then they go, okay. So we're talking about your business acumen. In the internal environment, he has the questions that you have to answer. How do, you, so the factors within an organization that influence decisions, how do you utilize or display this competency when performing your work or your tasks? And because these questions you've taken straight from Psycho, right? You haven't made this yes, stuff up. Yes, 100%, right? no. And so the definition too, yeah. You've fact, taken everything. Page, yeah, yeah. yeah, you're right. Yes, so on yes. every page, it's got a little thing where you can like, go straight back to Psycho's stuff. Yes, we've linked see, directly to like, Psycho's. You know, yes. what this is. So now I can I can tick the different levels. Like, how do I utilize this? What level of understanding do I display? What level of knowledge or skills? What's the level of reliance or dependency, et cetera? So what you've made this easier for me to do is, you know, interactively tick this and then go, okay, that's my submission. And now and it will pop out, yes. you know, the yes. self-assessment will pop out so that I can now see, like, you need to be here, you need to be there. So each Absolutely. of those little blocks have a whole bunch of questions and a whole bunch yes. of stuff. Your, your software stores all my answers and then pops out as, so that I 100%. said I needed to do. My required level for my business internal environment is a three as far as psych is concerned. And all the little answers I put in there is a 2.2. So that now creates a learning area that I need to do. And then create, now you say I've got to go and create a learning activity to, to make Yes, yes, 100%. So to, this is 100%. Three. Now I can this add this to my yes. plan and go, okay, that's what I need. That's what I need to do. And you've got a lovely little dashboard that shows me my learning areas. So my learning areas i haven't identified activities i've failed some stuff i've passed some stuff find the activities do the activities record the activities that's the second phase action phase and then you're still not done because the final phase is reflection the the, the reflection phase is on each activity that you've completed you have to then answer three questions which would assist you in reflecting on whether that activity addressed the learning area that you had identified in the first place. So the policy makes sense. It, um, you can see the value that it's at, lots of admin. Um, Saika has come up with a recommended template, as you said, in a, yeah. in a word slash PDF called the reflective plan, right? And that's yeah. a five page document that they've said CAs can use as a template to record their CPD and maintain evidence because you've got to maintain evidence for a period of three years, right? The CPD yes. cycle is three years and you've got to maintain evidence of the self-assessment you did, the activities that you did to uh, address those recorded and the reflections for a period of three years. Each year, you're required to make a declaration that you mm -hmm. had done that reflective plan for the last year, that you have it on tap. Because SICA, under the new policy, um, will also be conducting audits of CAs at random 
to assist. Uh, not to assist. <laughs> to, not to, 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 to no, check. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to assist in the overall scheme. To, to assist the overall scheme. Um, no, but to check. You know, to check CPD compliance. For me, yes. I'm really, I'm really excited about this because I don't like admin. No, sure, and and um, I think um, the, I don't the have one... the time for it as much as Absolutely. I respect much as I respect the need for it and I totally understand everything. So I'm really excited about being able to have this so that Thank I don't you. have oh, to do it myself. Thank you so much. No, and, and you know, that, that is the heart of it. And thanks for showing just, um, for showing that self-assessment portion. To be honest with you, from our, that's, that's just one of the very small, fe one of the features yeah, yeah, that yeah. our toolkit does afford. Um, and it allows you to self-assess yourself as per Psycho CPD framework in 30 minutes, in 30 to 45 minutes for the entire year. You know, it will help yourself uh, identify yeah. your learning areas. You can add your own learning areas. Yeah. So if you, like you say, you know, um, the new policy is more about applying things to your own role. Mm -hmm. If you think that you would like to add more, we make the space within there to do that. Yeah. So you can bolster and also, you know, it's part of your journey, your CA journey, your reflective plan. You can do, you're doing a good job yeah. and it's yeah, an yeah. actual documentation of that that self-study activities now count as relevant CPD activities yeah. in the new policy, whereas previously they didn't. And yeah, so previously for example, they kind of separated and they were like, certain hours have to be verifiable that you've got a yes. certificate or proof or something. And then um, like, so the bulk of your hours have to be verifiable. Someone can prove you've done it. And then there's a certain amount of hours of unverifiable where we kind of have to take your word that you read stuff or whatever. 100%, so that was, 100%. that was how it was in the past. And now they're saying, even if you read articles on your own, that counts. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's, you see, and for me, one, like uh, uh, an aspect of the entrepreneurial aspect, right, is we know that there have been, um, you know, CPD solutions and competitors who offer products to assist for years. And we're like, we're not, we're not the first on the market, right? Yeah. But a differentiating factor then would be by fine reading through that and seeing, okay, self-study activities such as reading articles and watching videos does count, right? Yeah. But what does that actually mean, right? If I was a CA and I, I, I personally, I like to read MoneyWeb or Business Maverick, not and I'm reading this article- you are a CA. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still coming to terms with it. No, no. As a CA. <laughs> As a CA. No, and, and you know, I'd be reading, I'd be reading, any, for example, an article on MoneyWeb or Business Maverick. And okay, now self-study articles count. Do I then have to take that URL and go to the Excel document yeah. and record it? And then I've got to reflect, I've got to assign it to a competency. The, yeah. the, the what inconvenience a gap, exactly, right? Yeah. So there's opportunity. So along with our toolkit, we developed that additional feature, our unique Chrome browser extension, right? The Reflective Plan Toolkit widget, which integrates directly with your browser and allows you to add any article or video yeah. instantaneously directly to your reflective plan Amazing. without ever having to leave the web page really cool. yeah so you're and literally you're reading the page and then you go i want this to count as cpd click on your little widget what do you want to allocate it to done oh, i thought i throw it through it again and i was like but how many cas really have the time to go find articles on money web or business maverick again like if the assumption is okay now i'm going to go read this so to... again that's why we do it for you you know three times a week we compile curated competency relevant content from around the web you go find the articles and the videos mm -hmm. and assign the competencies and send it directly through to you in your inbox three times a week all you have to do is click see these are you click your widget it gives you a summary of what's outstanding you see what did it what did they send through to me today click click you've added your activity and that's, only you to directly. Me. And that's only relevant yeah. to you exactly it's whether you that's think amazing. it's relevant to you that's so amazing. that's that's no well that's the idea I think of behind that entrepreneurship yeah. side of it yeah. is how to solve problems problems within problems and it's cool to see where that can take you you know because yeah. it's getting creative about it I suppose you know yeah um, and you're not going then, to jail <laughs> no, <laughs> exactly creative accounting is not a crime not going to, get, to jail depending on who defines yeah. it no. <laughs> but that's there's, there's there's a bunch of really exciting elements here so. To be honest, you know, at this point, most of the audience is 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 still going, you know, is still in the qualification process, which which is great. Yes, so yes. I think it's really important that they see. Unfortunately, there are admin and learning requirements Never after ends. qualify. Never, Never ends. ends, which is cool, and what that looks like. But I think um, 
I really, what I really love about this and what I want people to take from this is that, stupid cat. Um, what I want people to take from this is kind of looking at you, like, you know, recently qualified, saw kind of gap and you've gone out and created something which looks really cool i mean you've like the whole thing works and click on the button it comes through so it's like there's a little bit of programming stuff in there there's like you've got your little chrome widget you've got your stuff and there's a million little things obviously behind the scenes that you've had to figure out try out fail at go through but if someone landed on that page on their own without you know without hearing this conversation it doesn't it doesn't come across as something that you know you kind of like oh okay let's go and do this now and you've put a lot of you know it looks like a real like it's legit you know looks like oh, thanks that, thank you yeah that, it looks that, like that, a that, that, that's legit no, we, I mean, oh, of course and it is i mean it, but it's just i think i think when you know when we're qualifying we have this impression that businesses have to be big and impressive and like yes you know like it's got to be whereas you know what I like about this is like, a, you know, you saw a problem. You, how can we solve it? Went about, obviously there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes. Like, oh crap, now we have to do that. Or, oh, okay, now we've got to do that, to do that, to do yes. that, to do yes. that, to do that, yep. which is all cool and, and, and tough and, and all the rest of that. But from the front end, you know, you can't see all of that difficulty. You know, it all just holiday. looks, just it looks nice and own. smooth and clean and calm and everything is like all legit and sorted. Um, and what I love about that is that it's possible, you know what I mean? Yes. Like it's possible for you and me to run and, and for the people who are watching this to be entrepreneurs and run stuff and create something that's a legitimate business um, without, yeah, I mean, it, it is possible because I think we kind of have this idea that in order to like run businesses, we've got to have like SWOT analysis and big proposals and like no. external funding and offices and venues and like, you know, um, and I think it is, it's just this shift of, of of like i can create something um and it's a legit business 